Hey there, happy Monday. Thank you for joining me here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery, kate, embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and to a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour here. And we work on projects from beginning to end. Uh, so you can be part of the whole part of the process and make the project with us, uh, with me here, uh, and all of us here that are making the projects. Uh, so I am working on the Splendid Sampler 2, and last week we put together a whole pile of blocks from the Splendid Sampler 2 quilt along, and we've sandwiched them with batting and a, a backing fabric and we are ready to quilt. So we are quilting these just in small squares. And then later, uh, we will be sewing those squares together into a longer strip. So this is, the, this is what we have done already. So in sections of four, they've already been quilted. You can see all the quilting on there. And then we sew those sections of four together with another little uh, sashing border there. So th this is like a completely done portion of the quilt. It's been quilted on front and back. Uh, this is a process called quilt as you go. And it's my first time, uh, oh hey Lucy, first time here. Um, but this is my first time doing a quilt as you go project. And so far I am loving it. I was hesitant about it at first cause yeah, I'm just like, I don't know, can I make a decent quilt where I'm only uh, doing little sections at a time and I have to sew them together in a kind of a goofy way. But I am so loving it. First of all, I am not gonna have to crawl on the floor later when, uh, uh, when it's time to, when you normally would uh, baste your whole quilt to your backing and batting fabric. I can do it in little bits at a time and it's a great break from making all these blocks. I know I've heard from uh, uh, some of you that you know that we're getting a lot of blocks released at at um, the same time so there are just so many blocks to do and it's, it can feel totally overwhelming and this is just a really nice break this quilt as you go uh, a little break in between making the blocks and the best part is you know that that section is completely done so I'm loving it so far uh, so we have uh, several blocks several sets of four that we put together last week. I'll show you those and uh, I'm gonna pick one. I have one in mind and uh, we're gonna start free motion quilting on it. So it's also, uh, I'm a relatively new free motion quilter. So I've been playing around with that. This is, and this is a great, this size block has been just such a great practice size for free motion quilting. I mean, compared to a whole entire quilt, this is the way to go uh, to, if you're just learning how to free motion quilt. So uh, stay tuned for that. I have not done it in a while, so we'll see <laughs> see how free motion quilting goes tonight. I, it'll definitely need a warm up. <laughs> but all right, I am gonna flip you around and we will take a look at this. Oh gosh, Joe, yes, here too, you guys. Oh, since I last talked to you, I think we had like another 12 inches of snow and I'm not kidding. So right now we have about three feet of snow outside and our driveway keeps getting smaller and smaller and we can barely get in and out. It is crazy town nuts and I think we're supposed to get more snow tonight and I just, I can't even believe it. Ugh, goodness. And our, uh, the, the, our, our snow blower quit working too so we've been shoveling. <laughs> Oh, you're so melted, Dawn. Oh, man. Yeah, we are far, far, far from that. Um, all right, you guys. So these are the blocks uh, that we put together. Uh, we put these together last week. And what I mean put together is we, we've had our, we had our blocks done. And these are the six and a half inch squares. And then we sewed a sashing piece in and a little cornerstone. So sashing is basically just like a an interior border like an, instead of a border around the outside it's a border around the individual blocks and a cornerstone is just if you put a little square um, in the corner of those blocks it's sometimes called a, a cornerstone so sashing and a cornerstone 
And that's kind of the look we've been going for. Here again is the finished, finished um, piece. So we've been doing the sashing, which you know it blends into the white and the cornerstone. So we got these little cute floating squares. And then when we stitch the two blocks together, uh, we're going to be stitching it so it mimics uh, mimics the same design we have going on here. So we have um, last week we put together the four squares with the sashing and the cornerstones. So we have this guy. Oh, and we are also mixing up batting. So I just have a lot of scrap batting, and I am uh, I'm just using all different kinds just to kind of see how it works with free motion quilting and just for fun. And I get to use up stuff too, so I'm excited about that. So here is a like a really thick layer. I think it's actually two. I I figured out that it's actually two pieces of batting, but I thought it was kind of neat. Thick. So here's a thick piece of batting with these four. Uh, we got this, these four together, oop, upside down, there we go, there's the clock right side up. And this is the same batting, it's like a polyester uh, type batting, again, this is scrap batting that I had, I don't even, I have no idea what it is, um, but it, it does feel like some poly, I don't know what brand it is, it's some polyester batting. This is the single layer of the same kind. I think this is the one that we're going to do today. Uh, this is again that double layer. So it's extra thick, which will be kind of fun. Oh, I can't get this double layer apart. Maybe this is a single layer of super fat batting. Oh no, there we go. There I can. Oh, I must have. I must have folded it in half. There. So this is a, a thick batting. Oh, Barbara. Yeah, I'm excited. I have not experimented with batting before. Okay, and then this is the warm and natural. This is the 100% cotton batting that's awfully thin, but it, it drapes really nicely. Uh, I actually really love it. I kind of want to buy a whole giant roll of this, uh, but I was out of um, pieces this big. So again, I'm using scraps and that's when I switched over to try out some of this other batting. But this batting is what we've done uh, the rest of the quilt so far with. And so this is what it looks like on the back. I mean, here you can see with the light, um, all the designs and stuff. Um, it's not, it's not very thick, like it's not super poofy. So what I'm excited to see is w when we work on, uh, we're going to work on this one tonight. And this is that extra poofy stuff. I'm excited to see the contrast between what we did here on the warm and natural. And I just want to see how poofy that other, um, that polyester uh, double layer is going to be. Oh, Gretchen, I wish, but no, I, I do not. <laughs> Sometimes I can buy some things at wholesale cost just because um, I, can, I can contact a distributor and I'm usually buying large amounts of things, but I don't just magically get discounts, <laughs> uh, typically, unless I'm working directly with a company but nope. <laughs> uh, all right. So I think Gretchen's referring to I, my my embroidery kits are over at Joanne Fabrics. So if you want to find uh, some some things to stitch, they are over in the embroidery aisle. At at most, not all uh, Joanne Fabrics. But all right, you guys, this is the one tonight, and. It, I'm only, I'm going to work on this for like the sole reason that I have an idea of what to do for this part. The rest I have no, like, no clue whatsoever. Um, so we're going to have to play around. I'm going to start with what I, I want to do here. I think I'm going to trace these branches and then I want to do leaves almost like feathers, like a feather design. Uh, but there'll be leaves on these tree branches. That's that's what I'm excited about. That's the only thing I know. <laughs> so the rest, I kind of would like to also trace this hashtag because I think it's kind of cute and I think it'd look cute poofy uh, and, and the heart too. But other than that, I have no idea. Um, but I do also have, I got for Christmas, I got these uh, template, this template kit for my, um, for my, my my uh, free motion quilting foot. So, you know, like this one, it's kind of hard to tell here. Um, let's see, maybe I can see it. Oh yeah, it's, it's hard to see because it's see-through, but it has, this one's like a scallop edge and then it has like a little baby scallop edge. Oh, there you can kind of see there. Uh, 
you know, so that's one. And then there's a whole pile of other ones. And in theory, we should be able to make like, you know, this one is just like a weird shape, but in theory, we should be able to make like a flower out of this somehow, you know, magically make some leaves. I have no idea how to use these at all. So <laughs> um, I thought it might be kind of fun. We'll get, we'll get this out. Uh, here's if you just want some arches, I think. But we'll, oh yeah, here you can kind of, uh, it's hard to see the printing on this. But in theory, we should be able to get some crazy shapes out of these somehow. <laughs> so I, I'm, you know, like this, that's pretty cool. That's, that's from that leaf looking one. It would be fun to play with that a little bit. So there's kind of instructions here. I don't know. Maybe we'll give that a try too. This looks maybe easier, just four corners. So anyway, oh, Suzanne, you love using rulers? Okay, you're gonna have to scream at me um, if I'm doing stuff right or not. So I do wanna play with these tonight as well. So first we'll try and do this tree, putts around a little bit, uh, and then try and use some of those um, templates as well. And again, this is totally an experiment for me, just practice for free motion quilting. So. I'm not gonna freak out if something doesn't look perfect. But all right, let's start out here. I got my machine. I did clean it just a little. I, uh, right before we came on here tonight, let me get this a little settled here. There we go, I think that looks good. I have my Westerly foot on, and what this is, it's just a, a it's basically a, a quilting foot or a darning foot that is, a half inch circle. So at any point I'm gonna be, if I'm if I'm touching this foot, I'm gonna be a quarter inch away from my needle. So that's kind of a nice, a nice measurement tool. Okay, so that is the foot. Um, all right, I'm gonna just warm up. I'm gonna just actually see if this is even working correctly. Like I, I haven't done this in like over a month. Oh, huh, look, we did some practice. So this is just a practice uh, sheet. It's just a piece of batting and some scrap fabric. Let's just see if I even remember how to free motion quilt here, right? Okay, so first up, let's bring up that other piece, the, the bottom piece of thread. So I'm gonna just lift that up and just go backwards. Ooh, <laughs> my needle. I can't go backwards and have uh, the presser foot there at the same time. All right, and let's grab a little scissors here. I should be able to pull up that bottom piece now. Oh, there we go. Wow, I was a little angry there. Okay, there we are. Now I have both the bobbin uh, thread and the top thread up. So I'm gonna just do a couple stitches in place to start. I am just using my 50 weight thread. Uh, I did oil up the machine. Uh, Bonnie and Gretchen, I did oil the machine. I just did not, I did not flip it underneath and oil underneath. So um, I might have to do some of that still. So we're gonna see how it does tonight. I didn't have much time uh, to do a full uh, oiling, but I did, I oiled the side here. I oiled the bobbin underneath, everything in here and the top. I just did not flip the machine under, unscrew all the screws and do the bottom. So I may still have to do that. Okay, we're, ooh, this is, my presser foot needs to be raised a little bit. It's pressing too hard. It should float on top. It shouldn't be like pressing downward. So, all right, let's, oh, there we go. Much better. I gotta get used to the feel of this again. Oh, this is fun. I remember I like doing this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yay. Oh yeah, that's a good idea, uh, Gretchen. Let's experiment with a template here quick. All right, so these are made for this Westerly. Let's snip these threads. 
They're made for this westerly uh, foot, so it should fit right in there, and it does. And it's for the machine. It's for a home machine, um, and uh, that means it's a thick. It's a thinner template. So a lot of times, if you're doing free motion quilting on a large, long arm machine, sometimes it's a like a six millimeter acrylic. I think this is a, a three millimeter. So that means it can fit underneath my little knob and stuff here where the other ones can't. Ooh, look at these little nubbins. All right, let's try, let's try and do, oh my gosh, this is interesting. So let's try and do like a little scallop edge here. All right, I'm gonna grab my grip it here again. Oh my God, all right, let's give it a go. All right. Ah! So again, the westerly foot, it's a quarter inch away. So uh, my line is going to be a quarter inch away from wherever I do it here. Come on. There we go. All right. <laughs> So now in theory, I think I should be able to travel. Oh wait, now I should be able to go like this and keep going, right? Ooh, that is, I'm, ooh, geez, I, I veered off. Oh, I'm not, oh, see, I gotta press down on here. It was hitting the bar of my, um... all right, that's a good thing to discover. So the, the bar in back here, um, this, this lift, I lifted, I lifted this up just a hair. I mean, this is exaggerating, but I lifted it up just a hair and then the, the bar back here hit it and then, um, was blocking my path. So that's something I've got to watch for. I really have to hold that down. Okay, cool. Um, all right. That was fun. So here we go. I made the little scallop. That's like a little perfect little scallop there. So in theory, I should be able to go up and then the next one... I can, um, yeah, so let's back, I'm, I'm gonna backtrack quick up here. We're gonna give this a try. So I'm gonna go into like the center of where I ended and now let's, now let's tuck it in again. All right, let's give this a try. Gotta press it down though. I'm off my batting. <laughs> oh wow, this is definitely gonna take practice. I I gotta really um, push up against it because I just kind of veer off because I start thinking about something else. Oh, see like right there, I gotta press, I just kept going forward, but I gotta remember to press against my template. Okay, that is gonna totally take practice, but um, you can kind of see it. we can have we can like start some of these scallops and stuff. Ooh, so that'll be exciting. So we're gonna just wing it. <laughs> uh, so all right, I'm gonna just uh, lift up here. I'm getting antsy. I want to work on the real thing here now. Um, I'm expecting to make a lot of those same mistakes on the real one, like where I was veering off of the template, but at least now I kind of, I kind of know what mistakes I might make just very quickly. <laughs> but yay, all right, I'm excited to start. So we're gonna get all difficult right away, I think. I'm gonna try and do some feathers. So what I wanna do is I wanna start with this tree and I kind of want to, I think I want to, I want to go up and down here and maybe I'll try a ruler for that. Um, I think I can just use my grip it as kind of a ruler. And then I want to go to this first branch. I think I'm going to go up and down and then come back. And then I want to do like little uh, like feathers. Ooh, but maybe it should have a pointy end. Well, that might be too difficult to me. Let's just do like bulbous leaves. So like feathers basically, um, for, 
for the branch. I think that's kind of what I'd like to do. And then, then trace the next one and then go up, trace the next one and then do some leafies there. So that's the only thing I know so far. So let's, let's just start there. Okay. Ooh, get that needle up. There we go. Oh, I feel like I'm starting with like the most difficult thing ever. Oh, you would just do uh, um, scallops over the whole quilt. Yeah, my mom actually ended up doing some scallops over a couple blocks. So like a whole, one of these four blocks, she ignored the designs completely and then did um, did scallops on that. And I thought it looked so cool. So I, I definitely want to do that on one of mine as well. And actually maybe we'll, we could, we could just do this tree and then we could do like, you know, weird diagonal scallops or some some sort of scallopy thing across the whole rest of this. Like I have no idea for the bottom of this. That could all be scallops in theory. All right, I'm getting my glove on my left hand and the grip it in the right. Oh, I think usually I do that the other way around maybe. Well, I don't know, again, it's been a while. All right, press a foot down. So now this is much thicker. This is that thicker batting. And look what I did right there. I just, I just released my presser foot and it or it wanted to jump up right away. So I want it to kind of float on top. So I need it to barely kind of be sitting here. There, I'm going to tighten it now. Oh, Linda, that's a good question. That's I think the answer to that is because you kind of need to hold both to start, like I'm holding both the, the threads here, I think it will just kind of turn into a ball underneath if you don't do that. And yes, like what Diane says, it makes it way easier to just snip the threads. Like after I get started, I'm gonna snip the threads right away just so they're not in my way. Um, so I think, yeah, that's a, I think that'll be good. All right, let's give this a try. So I think this might not work. I think I'm gonna need a different ruler. You know what? I think I'm gonna just take, I'm gonna just take one of my rulers here. And we're gonna go on this side. Oh my God, I'm nervous. Press your foot is down. All right, let's try and scooch upward along my ruler here. This will be practice with the ruler. Ah. All right, let's do it. All right, I need some, you know what? I think I'm gonna put both gloves on. Oops. Move my ruler. So I have a ruler, I'm just estimating about a quarter inch away from my ruler, because again, that's, that's the difference between that. See, I don't actually think this one's too thin, because remember, I'm using that super thick batting, so my, I, like it's not gonna go underneath, because my, my presser foot is pretty much right up against the fabric. And because uh, um, I, I have this super thick batting. All right, that wasn't too bad. All right, so now I'm gonna go down. And again, I'm, I'm like doing a lot of stuff now. I'm holding the fabric and I'm holding this ruler. I think, a, see the problem with my machine is that a thicker ruler, this, my um, uh, screw right there, that hits it and then I can't move. So you can see right here, my foot's in kind of the lowest position. Um, if I, like I can't use my grip it because um, both these nubbins and the actual ruler hit it. And um, the other ones I don't have a, oh maybe I have a straight edge on one of these. Yeah, so this guy, this guy has a straight edge but I think it's about the same thickness. 
Oh, it's maybe a millimeter more, so three millimeters versus two. All right, let's try this. We'll try, we'll try our little westerly thing here. This is called the six inch spiral. So that sounds fancy. <laughs> Might have to play with that. So again, I'm estimating a quarter. Yeah, I have a, a low shank here. Oh, should I be putting it on the other side? I'm gonna try it like this. Totally concentrating. Okay, stop, move my hands, and keep going. All right, I think we did it. So I'm gonna backtrack back up to my branch that I wanna start. All right, putting the needle down. So, all right, in theory, I could rotate this whole piece, but if I was working in a whole giant quilt, I wouldn't be able to move my hands around very well, or my, my quilt around. So I'm gonna just pretend that I have to change the angle of this versus me turning my work. So again, I'm, now I'm trying to get um, up to that branch and the branch gets cut off in this design. I'm gonna extend it as if the branch went a little further. So I gotta, again, I gotta estimate a quarter inch away from here. All right, oh, let's do it. I get so nervous doing this. It's totally working though. I don't know why I'm nervous. So I'm just stitching in the ditch basically, but I'm using this ruler to help me. Oop, getting a little off. That's okay. All right, now I'm, I'm gonna go up to a point. There. So I'm kind of like extending my tree branches. All right, now let's say I'm going back to the other side. So this dial, my little screw right here, that hits too. So this actually might be a little thick even, but we're gonna give it a try. I just gotta really press it down. So again, about a quarter inch away. All right, let's try and go back. And breathe, yes, exactly, Sandra. God, it's so silly, but you're totally right. Ooh, a little. All right, I think we did it. My stitches are maybe a little small. Um, I'm gonna just show you guys. There, so I went zoop, and I extended it a little bit, and I went back. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna stitch down, so I'm at the bottom again, and then I'm going to add the little leaves in. So I'm gonna freehand that. I think I'm gonna just try and freehand. I don't need a ruler to get back down here. All right. I gotta remember how to do feathers. <laughs> well, let's do it. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep with the gloves tonight so far. But now, now that my threads, see these are my two starting threads, they're exposed right now. So I'm gonna just snip those right against the fabric there. There, now those won't get tangled and in our way. Oh, you know, because you're holding your breath. Nice. All right, breathe. All right, we're gonna do this first little leafy feather. <laughs> All right, so these are kind of like teardrops where, or like a heart where it kind of comes to the center it like bloops inward. We need to have that inward bloop um, as we get to branches. So, all right, let's give this a go. There we go. So it's like a little half heart. And once, once I get down a little bit more, you guys will see. All right, I gotta remember what I'm doing again though. So this is one version of a feather. I know we, we looked at different feather versions when we um, worked on the, um, the uh, Charming Chevron's quilt. Cute, it totally looks like leaves, I love it. So I'm gonna extend it up. If I cross over this hashtag, who cares? I'm more interested in these leaves than the hashtag. So the hashtag can look like it's maybe hiding behind the tree or something. I'm, I like doing these feathers.
And I like that they can be different shapes and you know, like this one got intertwined a little bit. I just kind of think it's so cute. All right, we're almost to the point. All right, I'm gonna do one more and then we'll do the point. I'm gonna cross over that hashtag. All right, here we go. Now I'm gonna do that like leaf on the tip. I mean, it's, you know, we're doing, um, they're kind of like feathers. Okay, so there we go, cute. All right, so now I'm gonna come down the other side. So for this, for these I went on the underneath of like the heart shape and then to the top. This one I'm gonna try doing on the top and coming underneath. So they might look a little goofier than this, uh, but we're gonna give it a go. A lot of times when people do feathers, they'll sometimes come back down and then do underneath again or whatever they're more, more comfortable with. I'm just gonna kind of practice doing both. So the other thing I need to keep in mind here is that we have another branch here that I need to put leaves in. So I need to kind of only use up half my space here. We'll see how well that goes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we'll give it a try. So I just gotta remember, I gotta breathe and then only take up half this space. And I'm making the hearts from the top to bottom. All right. I, gotta, I might have to say that out loud. <laughs> All right, top to bottom, and I still need to make that teardrop shape. And then I kind of just travel down a little bit. Okay. All right, that's one. Top to bottom. Top to bottom. Oops, I kind of took up a lot of space there. Definitely not as comfortable going this direction, but that's why I'm practicing. Top to bottom. Top. Now they're getting littler because I got to fill in this space. Top to bottom. And I think we'll get like one more little one in here. There we go. All right, so I'm going to travel I'm not gonna use my ruler. I'm just gonna travel up to the next thing. Oh, we didn't trace this branch yet. So, all right, now I gotta trace the second branch, but here we go. That's kind of like my first little <laughs> wackadoodle tree. I think we'll extend it way up into here maybe. That'd be kind of fun. So, all right, I'm gonna trace. I'm gonna use my ruler again and uh, uh, trace here to there. <laughs> you guys, am I totally missing the conversation that is very possible. <laughs> I'm like totally concentrated on this. All right. Um, yeah, so same thing. I'm gonna trace this stem and then we'll attempt to do more leafy leaves, but I think it looks awfully cute. Oh, I can't wait to see what it looks like on the back. Um, so one thing I am kind of stitching pretty densely for this, um, poofy fabric. So at some point I do want to leave some nice big spaces so you can see the poofiness because that was kind of the point, right? Oh, but if we do the big clamshells, maybe that will do it. Ah, thanks, Gina. Thanks, Libby. I'm having fun. So let's, let's pretend that I didn't move my quilt yet. All right, let's get this ruler in here again. I'm going to, I'm tracing those branches with the ruler and you know what that's pretty dang slick there we go now all I have to do is kind of pivot and come back down all right and I think that does the job snazzy all right so now I'm gonna go I'm gonna come back down all right now I gotta try and do these feather shapes again, filling in the space. So now I'm going underneath and I'm watching out for the ones that I already did here. I'm kind of puzzle piecing them in the middle of them. So we're gonna actually get this really dense here. But I think it's kind of sweet. There, see, they're kind of puzzling together. So this is gonna be a mass of just 
leaves, but they'll spread out up here, which I think will be fun. All right, I think I'm gonna do, well, let's get the needle down first. I think it's time to remove this pin. Get that out of my way. All right, should I do, I think, I think this will be the last one. This will be the top, the top one, just because I was thinking it'd be fun to do one more, but then I'm really close to the edge, so I might cut it off and I don't want it cut off. So let's, let's make this the top blue. There we go. All right, so we did it. This kind of, this is our halvesy thing. Um, all right, let's, uh, again, let's split this one in half, kind of, and uh, there's looks like there's more space here than there was here, so I can make some pretty big bloops here, it looks like. Again, now I'm going from the top to bottom. Top of the heart, and then the bottom of the heart. Ooh, there's some poofiness here, though. We might be getting some puckers in the back, but we'll see how it goes. All right. I'm going to travel up again, and since I'm a little farther away, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna... to... Ooh, wow, see, that's too low. I'm going to throw in the ruler here. Just traveling. All right, I think that's about right. There we go. Second branch. It's fun! Okay, I'm having fun. Maybe we just do some big... Maybe this one's all about the tree. And we do some big outlines, like big echoing or something, and then maybe we lead that into some clamshells. That could be fun. All right. All right, I need, to tr I need to outline this branch. So same thing, we're gonna use the ruler. I think I'm a little low, yeah, oh well. That's fine. We get the idea. Okay, travel down, and we're gonna fill in these spaces again. Making our little heart shapes. All right, so now these ones will probably go off the quilt um, when we cut it. So I think that'll be, that's fine at this point. So here's the top one going off the quilt. And now coming back down. Again, these will probably be, be cut off, but that's okay. I think that's about good. All right, I'm gonna travel up a little and then I'm gonna turn on the stump of this, I'm gonna turn that traveling into more leaves. Like right here, I think. And again, we're going off the page here. Oop. So I'm going to just kind of travel over. This is all going to get cut off. All right, but there, there we go. That's one half of it there. Um, so let's, let's just do this other side. So I'm going to come down and do a couple feathers, just kind of how I did here. And then we'll trace our designs again and do feathers this way. And that'll be like the big, the big part of this, I think. After this, we can just kind of echo around this and do the clamshells. Oh, you decided to do this for your splendid sampler quilt, the quilt as you go. Oh, you sashed your, oh my gosh, Leslie Ann, you are so far. You, you sashed together 40 blocks on Sunday. Holy bajoli, that's amazing. That is so cool. All 
All right, yeah, I'm stitching so densely on this. Uh, so we're going to have to loosen up after, I think. Okay, so I'm going to hit this branch. All right, angle it back a little bit, coming down. All right. I'm gonna go back up a hair and let's do these leaves. So these are opposite of what I was doing. Let's see if I can figure them out. Top of the heart, bottom of the heart. Top of the heart, and I can travel over here a little bit. Bottom of the heart. We'll do a little one here. Top of the heart, bottom of the heart. Top of the heart, and bottom of the heart. Okay. All right, that'll do. Oh, you said sash, not quilted yet. <laughs> Well, that's a huge chunk of it done. All right, doing this next branch now. Getting the hang of this straight ruler, which is cool. This stitching is pretty small. Lot to practice yet, for sure. I'm definitely having fun though. That's the point, right? Oh my gosh, got 72 done? Holy cow. My mom's got quite a few done as well. I got a long way to go. All right, let's get a big leaf in here. For some reason, I discovered um, through this free motion quilting process, like learning when I was working on the um, Charming Chevron's quilt, just I really like doing these feathers. <laughs> I think they feel so fancy. Uh, it makes me feel like I know what I'm doing these, uh, by doing these feathers, so they make me happy. So I think you'll probably see a lot of feathers uh, in this quilt. <laughs> These ones are pretty wonky, but oh well. All right, I'm coming down this side again. Again, a lot of this will probably get cut off in the actual quilt once we put the sashing in. I'm even breathing here, people. Okay, maybe I'm not breathing so much. <laughs> All right, can we get one tiny more in here? I think we'll get that on the next one. All right. Here's our last branch. Let's get the, get the um, ruler out here. This one's going off the edge too. back down and we'll go back up a hair it's pretty nifty just being able to hold the ruler in your hand and move it as needed like pivot we'll have to remember that I'm trying to kind of puzzle piece these guys in and that's easier said than done. All right, so I'm gonna try and mimic them coming down this side.
Oh, I got nervous all of a sudden. Ooh, I'm definitely better at these in one direction than the other, but I suppose that's to be expected. All right, that's the guy. I think I might... I didn't put a little bottom in here. Eh, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe we should stop it right there. Okay, I don't know what to do next now. Let's, uh, let's just take a look at it quick. So here we are, we did the little leaves here. Mary, I was totally, entirely scared to start free motion quilting for the first time. I, I just grabbed like a scrap. Um, this is like a scrap for a while and I put some batting in there and just gave it a go and just got the feel of it. Um, one person suggested if you go faster with your foot and slower with your hands, that that kind of works better than going fast with the hands and slow with the foot, which is I think what the instinct is. Um, so just, I would give that a try, but yeah, totally just start. Um, I'm learning from people's suggestions along the way and uh, just giving it a go and kind of realizing what's working and what's not. You do kind of just have to dive in, um, get some scraps and just give it a start some swirls. It is for me, it was not and it's still not easy to do meandering. Um, with swirls, I feel like I can fill in a space easier and I don't it's like less decision making. So that might be a place to start. Oh, I want to see the bottom, but I don't know. Should I take this? Oh man, I need to know what to do next before I can do anything, can I? All right, I think... See, this is the problem. This is where I get stuck with free motion quilting. Like, what do I do now? I suppose I could just take it off the... Um, take it off. I don't have to keep continuing. I could take it off and then start somewhere else and we could just decide. Uh, maybe that's what we should do right now because it's getting kind of late. I'm going to just, um, I'm gonna just stop. So let's just bring it up. I mean, this is one of the benefits of free motion quilting. We're working with this tiny, uh, or with um, Quilt As You Go, we're just working with this tiny piece. All right, so I'm gonna snip the bottom. Oh my gosh, the back looks so freaking cool. All right, I'm gonna show you guys. Uh, and then what, then I have no other ideas, we need to, we need to decide what to do on this tomorrow, but I definitely want to continue this tomorrow. But look, so here's what we did. And you can see I extended um, these to look like, kind of like leaves, but look at how cool the back is. It's almost like a peacock. Ugh, it is so cool. But here, look, here's where you can see the poofiness of this open space and then how dense all this is. I freaking love it. I, you know, I think I'm going to like the back of this quilt better than the front, honestly, when I'm done. So I want to do something around this. I love this so much that I want the rest of the quilt or the rest of this block to like honor this a little bit. Like, okay, so I'm thinking maybe it's easier to look at look at it from the back to make decisions but you know what if we what if we just scalloped you know here we could kind of make it like it's on like this rolling hillside like this this tree on the top of the hill and then we could then we could just echo it a little bit here or we could do like maybe like almost like sunshine like a little swirl that just echoes by echo, I just mean going around the edge. I don't know. I do like the idea of the scallops. I, I do want to play with these. So let's, maybe we do a scalloped edge. We could actually turn the scallops too so they kind of cascade a little bit. I don't know. Let's do something with this. So let's let's plan tomorrow on doing scalloped edges and maybe we just extend it all the way down and then we can do something else up here. Oh, we could go this way. Yeah, you're right. It would kind of look like grass this way, wouldn't it? Oh, that'd be awfully sweet too. 
I'm wondering if we can just like be a little clever with this. Like if we can, maybe, maybe the scallops only go this far and then, I don't know, we could do like a bunch of vertical lines here or something and it could be like grass or not grass, like, um, like, like water or something. So if we do scalloped and then like an angle, maybe a line and then an angle and that could be like, I don't know, water, and then we could do scallops all the way on the inside, so scallops all the way down, and then up here, you know, I don't know, something for a sky or something. I don't know, but let's let's definitely assume that we're going to play with this scallop tomorrow. I want to attempt to, you know, get a little comfortable with rulers, that the straight ruler was helpful for me today, but oh my god, I think this is just so cool. <laughs> but yeah, so on the front, you know, it kind of all just goes away to some extent because we're so focused on the block. But that's why, I, you know, I'd love to do just a whole quilt um, thing like this. Let's make a scene. Let's make this look like a, a cute scene. That's going to be our objective for tomorrow. So uh, I don't know what that means, but let's, let's keep that in mind. <laughs> all right, you guys, I'm going to flip you around and we're going to call it an evening. It feels so amazing to start doing this again. Hello! So this just really, really makes me happy <laughs> playing around, playing around with this. So here it is. Again, you can, you can't really tell too much, but uh, from the back, I think it really is, is going to pop, especially with this poofy, the poofy uh, batting here. Oh, there you can see with the shadow. I think that's just going to be so cool. Look at that. It's so fancy. <laughs> Awesome, you guys. I, I'm having so much fun with this. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to read your comments a little bit better tomorrow. But yeah, ask your questions. Uh, give this a try. Uh, I'm, I'm relatively new at this, so you can do a lot pretty quickly, I think. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm having a good time. So I hope you join me tomorrow. I'll be here at 8.30 uh, p.m. again on the Penguin and Fish Crafters page at Central Time. Uh, not Penguin and Fish Crafters, sorry. We're on the Penguin and Fish Facebook page. Oh, Bonnie, I did snowshoe just a hair um, on Saturday at like 2 a.m. in the morning. So I guess Sunday at 2 a.m. in the morning. We had a late night on Saturday and it was beautiful out. And I knew it was going to be a little uh, uh, crappier on Sunday. So I got the snowshoes on and I walked around our yard for like three minutes. And it it just was the best. <laughs> so awesome, you guys. I will get this up on YouTube if you want to watch it again at Penguin and Fish Movies. And I'll catch you again tomorrow. Have a great evening. See you later.